So, Dream just exposed the YouTuber John Swan. Now, as you guys know, recently, Dream has been in some drama with John Swan. Basically, Dream has accused John Swan of impersonating him and sending people weird messages about Minecraft X mods and even calling people the N word. Now, John Swan claims that this was not him and that somebody else was logged on to his account and that they are the ones that were impersonating Dream. Now, after this entire situation blew up on Twitter, Dream decided to do a one hour live stream explaining why he believes John Swan was lying. So I'm just going to go over everything that Dream had to say. I'm going to give my thoughts and explain why I think John may or may not be guilty. So I'm going to try and be as unbiased as possible in this situation. One year ago, I did a collaboration with a small YouTuber. I had, I, it, it was one year ago, it was February, or no, it was before that, but but I, I did a collaboration. I had like a, a million subscribers or something like that. And a small documentary channel reached out to me. They had 6,000 subscribers. You know, I, I, thought, I thought it'd be cool. I thought it'd be a good idea. I decided to do a collaboration. It was cool. The video was good. It was a good video. The collaboration was great. I had a good time. Three months later, that's when drama struck. I got a DM from somebody who messaged me and said, somebody is impersonating you. So I get screenshots of, of this impersonation account saying I was gonna make a, a sex Minecraft mod, a realistic one, and saying the N-word. I get a DM also from the same person saying that it was the person that I did the documentary channel that was doing it. So, I reach out to this person. I, at the time, I, I didn't I didn't really believe them. I thought it's kind of, it's like the dog ate your homework. Like, no, it was my brother who got on my computer and, and DM'd you the N-word. Like, okay, I didn't really believe it. I mean, that was, that, was, that was my perspective, but I didn't say anything. As you can see, I didn't reply. There's no, okay, well, you can't, you can, you can pretend. There's nothing there, because I did not reply. The DMs were empty. So he has claimed, obviously, that this man was not him. So, let's find out. So, Dream pretty much starts off the stream by explaining how he met John Swan and how all this drama started. He then goes on to explain why he believes that it was John Swan who sent these messages and not someone else. He said, hello. Harley said, hi. He said, what's up? Harley said, nothing much. Just wanted to add you because you seem fun to talk to. They had priorly talked on Twitter but on Discord. He said, things not working out with LT Cobra. For context, LT Cobra is a friend of Harley's that John Swan knew about and was a prior relationship knowing that Harley was having issues with LT Cobra. Interesting. So apparently, Swan claimed to me earlier today that this was his 12 year old friend that he hasn't spoken to in a year. How, I ask you, how would his 12 year old friend know about Harley's relationship with LT Cobra? That doesn't, that doesn't line up to me. I, I just like to say that it does not really line up to me. I mean, that is an interesting scenario unless his 12 year old friend somehow knew about this because they had none, no prior Discord messages. None at all, zero, actually none. So he couldn't even do research because Harley's old account was actually suspended. Now, I gotta be honest here. I think John Swan is innocent, but this definitely made me doubt his story. How exactly would this 12 year old know about the beef between Harley and LT Cobra? That definitely seems very suspicious. Now, since this stream came out, it has been proven that there was some previous DMs about the situation between LT Cobra and John Swan. So it's entirely possible that this 12 year old had read those DMs and maybe that's how we knew about this. Either way, this just makes John Swan's story seem a little less credible. Now, Dream continues his stream by saying this. So what are you up to on this fine day, Mr. Swan? I'm in a call with Dream at the moment. He was not in a call with me. Yup. Keep that in mind. Now, what would you say? I mean, would you say yes, yep? Would you say yup? I mean, maybe. Maybe. Maybe you're one of the people in the world that say yup, right? Maybe you are. Keep that in mind. Keep in mind, yup. Let's do a language analysis. Keep in mind yup. Keep that yup in mind, okay? Now, I have never, as far as I know, said yup in my entire life. 
I rest my case. Okay, no, I don't, I don't rest my case. That's not it. That's actually not it. If that was it, that, that's probably enough. But that's not it. That's not it. He says yup. So that's in his vocabulary. That's in, that's an interesting an interesting thing. Very interesting. He happens to say yup. His 12 year old friend happens to say yup. Just like him. All right, now that was just a terrible point. I get what Dream is trying to say. He's basically comparing how this supposed fake John and the real John talk. Real John says yup, and the fake John says yup. That's not really concrete evidence. I mean, plenty of people say yup, so you can't really say that this proves John Twan was lying. If this was like an actual commentary video that someone uploaded trying to expose John Swan, this point would be completely destroyed because anybody can say yup. John did not invent the word yup. And just because they use this word doesn't mean anything. Well, they said, what have you done today? Anything interesting? And Swan said, yeah, I just recorded an exposed video on Skeppy. Harley said, ha ha ha, he's a funny guy. And John said, also scummy. Harley said, ha 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 ha, you did an exposed video? What did you expose him for? Swan said, he steals code. Interesting 12 year old. Keep in mind, this is a 12 year old, according to John Swan, 12 year old. He steals code. <laughs> Let's look at this verbiage. Exposed video. Now, if I was saying that, I would say exposed video. Expose video. I don't know what you would say. Maybe you would say exposed video. But let's just say maybe the odds are, maybe the odds are 50-50. Maybe the odds are 50-50. Let's see what John Swan himself says. And there's, there's plenty more where this came from. I mean, he's made beauty, he's, 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 he's used this vernacular plenty of time. Exposed videos. Exposed video. I mean, it's just the D. That's the only thing I'm interested in. The D. I, I wouldn't. I would do that without without the D. Exposed video. I, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say maybe he happens to have yup. Exposed video. Maybe. Who knows? He said any spams uploads which with duplicate content against YouTube's terms of service. That is a smart, a smart 12 year old who happens to know YouTube after having apparently asked Swan about YouTube and talked to him for 10 seconds. He steals code though. This is important because this is a relevant thing because back then people were saying, oh, Skeppy steals code in his videos and things like that um, in the commentary community, which just so happens to be the community that Mr. Swan resides in. Anyway, let's just say 12 year old understands. He understands the commentary community. He's, he's in on the know. He knows all of that. He knows about the YouTube TOS. You should enforce TOS across all levels. He has impeccable. I don't know, like spelling and grammar and... Now, I'm kind of mixed on this point. Dream, once again, is trying to act as if John Swan is the only person that says exposed video. I myself have used both exposed video and exposed video, so that's not really a good point. But Dream does have a good point about this 12-year-old knowing about coding and the YouTube terms of service. Maybe this 12-year-old is just really smart and knows a lot about YouTube. I'm sure I have some 12-year-olds in the audience. Do you guys know anything about coding? or the YouTube terms of service. Maybe that is common knowledge. I don't know. When I was 12 years old, I was just watching Minecraft videos. I had no knowledge of YouTube or how the YouTube algorithm worked. So maybe this actually was John Swan. Now to kind of debunk this a little bit, this fake John Swan said that they were making a video on Skeppy and John Swan never did that. And knowing John Swan's content, I don't think he would make an entire video about Skeppy. He tends to only go after people that have done some very serious things. And all also, I, I looked into John Swan's Discord server to see if he has ever mentioned Skeppy in his Discord server, and not once did John Swan ever mention Skeppy. So it would be kind of weird for John Swan out of the blue to be like, I'm gonna be making a video on Skeppy to this random person and not actually make a video on Skeppy and not mention this once in his Discord server. I'm gonna call with him with a screenshot. Two different people. Keep that in mind. Most likely, two different people in on this meme. These are the messages between fake dream. Nicholas Diorio, who's that? Well, that is the new name on the fake dream account. The new name, it has a new name and profile picture. That's how discord works. But Harley was able to find the old account and it has the new name, Nicholas Diorio, instead of dream with the dream profile picture. So who is Nicholas, you may ask? That is a good question. This is Nicholas, drama YouTuber. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is Nicholas. That's interesting. Why is the old fake dream account now called Nicholas? Let's see, I'm going on his second YouTube account. His most recent posts, 
He has Old Town Road cover, John Swan. Homicide cover, John Swan. I'm Alex's next victim, there's some other ones. This isn't John Swan, this is John Swan's best friend. My question is how is it all linked? So what we know is the new name on the account, which wasn't changed after this was brought up. It was not changed after this was brought up. It was not. Harley was able to confirm that with screenshots and witness testimony from that before this all happened, this name was Nicholas Diorio. So that's interesting. Very interesting. Why is the new account that used to be called Dream, that was an alt account, apparently of this 12 year old who is a family friend called Nicholas Diorio, John Swan's best friend. They've been friends for a long time from what I did my research. They've been tweeting about each other. I had a secret account, join their discord and, and look at their messages. They, it, it seemed interesting. They seemed like very good friends. Why would this randomly be? So these are the scenarios here. One, the 12 year old is a genius, a mad genius who knows how to perfectly mimic John Swan's vernacular, his mannerisms, the way he speaks, has information about Harvey's friends without ever having spoken to him before and have no past messages that then now, a year later, is still a criminal mastermind using Nicholas Diorio's name on the old fake dream account. For some reason, a man with 50,000 YouTube subscribers who has no relevance to this situation other than that he is John Swan's friend or it was John Swan. Now, which is more likely? Now, this is also a somewhat good point. He's basically saying that John Swan and Nicholas Diorio did this together to try and troll Harley, which I just don't believe. If this really was John Swan, I don't think Nicholas had anything to do with this because he's been streaming and tweeting about the situation and he seemed to know nothing about this. And if Nick and John were really trolling Harley, I have no doubt that Nick would have come out and admitted to this. Now, Dream does have a good point about this 12 year old changing their name to Nicholas Diorio. Oreo, that definitely seems very weird. Like, why would they do that? How do they even know who Nicholas Diorio is? It seems to me that whoever this person is has to have knowledge about John and John's friends and also the commentary community, which is definitely possible, but something definitely seems off because this person is apparently a 12 year old friend of John Swan or a 12 year old cousin of John Swan, but for some reason they're going around pretending to be Dream and also pretending to be John Swan's friend Nicholas Diorio. I can't log in. He left his account signed in on a 12 year old's computer and he can't log in. Well, that's not how that works. If, if you left your account on somebody else's computer, then you can still log in. It's just they can log in too. I mean, it's not like he knew your password and was able to change your password or anything. And you had to submit a password request or anything. I actually can't remember why I was able, why I wasn't able to get in. Maybe bad connection the house of cards falls it continues to fall you cannot build a house of lies without having inconsistency after inconsistency after inconsistency now apparently according to harley they said that he originally claimed it was his cousin apparently he said to someone else that it was his sister he said to me it was a family friend that he hasn't spoken to he went on record yesterday saying he has not spoken to this person that is a family friend not related to him at all apparently that's 12 years old that he says has autism that has now apparently having not spoken in a year to this person is now apparently framing a random commentary youtuber nicholas diorio with 50,000 subscribers it doesn't make any sense. The, the dots, they, they, none of them connect. None of them connect to each other. Somehow Nicholas Diorio is is a, is a count that used to be Dream and like that's random. It's, it's like his best friend. Now, once again, this is not looking very good for John Swan. Apparently he changed his story multiple times. One time he said it was his cousin. Then he said it was his sister. Then he said it was some family friend. I, I honestly don't know how I can defend this point. I mean, maybe John Swan didn't know what was going on. Maybe he forgot that he left his account on his friend's computer. So maybe he just thought it was his sister. Maybe he thought it was his cousin. Maybe he thought he was hacked. Either way, this makes John look really bad. And I think he has some things 
to answer for. I mean, I I will say, I, I usually don't express negative opinions like this. I posted a comment on a subreddit in a comment, a, a comment that had 20 likes, but somehow this turned into me getting exposed because everybody has to turn everything into drama on Twitter nowadays. A comment with 21 likes became like this, this million view catastrophe on YouTube with tons of channels and tweets and I'm a liar apparently for for nothing. Now Dream once again brings up the point that this all started because he left a comment on some random small subreddit that had like 20 likes. And like I said in my last video, John had every right to respond to him. It doesn't matter how many likes the subreddit had or how many users the subreddit had. Dream has 18 million subscribers. So of course John Swan is going to reply to Dream. I just don't understand why Dream can't see that. If PewDiePie came out and said dream dream did this terrible thing to me dream of course would respond to that even if PewDiePie said that on some random subreddit even if PewDiePie just texted that to one of his friends and that got leaked dream would respond to that because one of the biggest youtubers would be calling him out so once again I understand why John Swan would respond to that form your opinion if you want if you disagree with me after seeing all that evidence that's fine if you if you think you want to give him the benefit of the doubt that's fine I'm not a liar though I'm not a liar, and it's perfectly reasonable for me to assume that he was being dishonest and not even tell anybody that, not even tell anybody that, but just assume that he was probably being dishonest based on everything that I knew and everything that I had seen. It was reasonable. It was reasonable. So even if you, you don't think that's enough to convince you for whatever reason, or you don't like me and that, so you're going to stick to that opinion, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not a liar. I did not lie about that. And I was sharing my opinion and opinions on the internet don't really work anymore, but that's that. So, Detective Dream, like I said, feel free to form your own opinion. I've expressed mine. You know, I'm not, I'm not a god. I'm not, I'm not an always right being or something. You can form your own opinion. All right, so I gotta be honest. After everything Dream has presented, I do understand why he didn't believe John Swan. But the problem I have is this never should have gotten this big. Dream was streaming this to 300,000 people. That's how big this entire situation got. It really shouldn't have been this big. This happened one year ago. This is one year old drama. What should have happened is when John Swan said he was hacked and all this, Dream should have replied saying, I don't believe you. This is why I don't believe you. And they should have talked it out that way this never would have happened this never would have been made public this really wasn't that big of a deal to broadcast to almost half a million people this situation was blown completely overboard now do i think john has some things to answer for yes i do there are definitely some inconsistencies in his story and i think he needs to respond to this so yeah these are just my thoughts on this entire situation if you guys have enjoyed be sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel